afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 227. Welcome to 2022. This is our first meeting of the year, so Happy New Year to you and all that. Um, unless you're in China, they're New Year's later, I think. So um, anyway, for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, this meeting is recorded. Or, and those of you that are with us right here, right now, you are being recorded. Just a quick reminder, it's 2022. want to get that out there. Um, we have a whole bunch of new people joining us here on YouTube for the first time. This is fantastic. They are verified that they can hear us and all kinds of other good stuff. So hopefully the technical details are sorted out. And we're just going to roll through and have a fantastic, smooth stream. Because I've had plenty of those in the last few weeks on my own stream. Anyway. Uh, go ahead and say hi, hello, if you haven't already. Uh, our, our hopefully our regulars. Hey, we got a Ron. I was wondering if Ron and Jacob were going to be here. Ron's here. So uh, we've made a whole bunch of people jump from Twitch to YouTube. It's great to have you here. And all right, I want you to people look over here at the chat and see that it jumped up to the top. That is not at all what I wanted to do. All right, I'm going to have to go fix that real quick while we're recording because uh, otherwise it's not. It's all going to be messed up. All right. I was half expecting that. All right, here we go. Here we go. What are we doing today? Today is actually probably going to be a short meeting. Um, I say that. I should never say that because every time I say that, it ends up being a long meeting. But anyway, we have triage, and then we'll take the usual questions and comments, things that people want to bring up. So while we're doing triage, if you have a question, think about getting it into the chat, and we'll talk about it there. Uh, for these of you that have been here since the beginning, uh, I'm glad you made it over here from Twitch. Uh, without further ado, I think we jump to triage. Bob, you ready? Let's go. All right. Woohoo. Okay. I upgraded to Windows 11, and Twitch by, or Twitch GitHub by default will track your UI, uh, your system color, and so I had to get in and make sure that this is white. But then I have to turn on and switch it back to dark. Uh, it's things you have to do to get the right color schemes to match the streams. It's yeah work. Anyway, uh, PDB should be published from source server. So this is an old bug that uh, was in Wix 4. It's assigned to, I thought it was assigned to me. What happened here? Um, I don't know how I got lost from this. You took it off. That's really strange. I don't know why I removed myself from this. Um, that's really strange. Okay. Uh, quick update. So the there's no real place for publishing um, sources. This is issue 4683. And yeah, that's big enough. All right. So um, there's no good place to publish native PDBs anymore. And managed PDBs in the new world have generally moved towards uh, either um, embedding the PDBs if you can, or they have a uh, the, the oh, what, portable PDBs, which you can also stick in NuGet packages and store them with uh, NuGet.org. We have chosen to embed our PDBs because it doesn't make the XEs and DLLs that much bigger and uh, for all of our managed stuff, but that does leave us with the problem that native, which does not, which are not portable PDBs and cannot be embedded in the DLL, and I'm not sure we should anyway since most of the native DLLs that we ship ship with customers' code, which means we would be pre, uh, prematurely bloating their code simply to carry our, our PDBs. So we have native PDBs floating around that we don't have a, a symbol server naturally to uh, upload them to, or at least not one that's part of the Microsoft like ecosystem provided by Microsoft. There was a thing for legacy symbol packages called nuget.smbsource.net. Um, that came from the guys that were running symbol source org, which was really cool. And when this issue was opened, I was thinking that that was going to be the answer for us, a place where we could stick our symbols in the open and do that and just be able to pull them and debug from anywhere. But I always wondered how it was that they were maintaining a server that could potentially be, you know, pumping out gobs and gobs of data. And, uh, you know, there was no business model or anything around it. Anyway, uh, the end result is, yeah, no, it all's collapsed and it's all gone away. And even the thing that NuGet kind of brought it in, that's all been decayed and all I see now are I went searching through all of GitHub trying to see if anybody was using it and all I found were commits saying removing this because it's no longer stable I think it started in 2019. So that means we don't have a great symbol source available for any of the you know known places. 
which leads us to where should what should we do with this issue? Um, in the past, for quick reference, we did not publish symbol source. We just had a zip file that contained all of our PDBs. And it was all of them back then. It was both the managed and the native uh, because there was no other option. So it was all the PDBs. It was the debug.zip. And we just uploaded it with every release and carried it along with all of, uh, alongside all the, the installers and other binaries for Wix 3. So when I got here, there are a couple options we have then in Wix 4. We are currently packaging our native PDBs into NuGet packages that are that are SNU packages, the symbol packages, and the uh, the the symbol packages. Are, the way we're using them are not correct because those SNU packages are only supposed to be for the new format and the legacy format are just normal NuGet packages that would be uploaded to the system that's gone. So anyway, we're creating not correct SNU packages for our legacy packages, but they work. We can you know, zip them up and carry them along. That's what we're basically doing right now. Um, the alternative, quick alternative would be instead of creating individual SNU packages for each thing, you know, things like, you know, dutil, not dutil because it's a library, uh, any of the custom actions, or all the extensions, custom actions get their own package. Instead, we could just take all the PDBs and zip them back up in a debug.zip again and uh, ship that again. So that's kind of the second option. But dutil also has PDBs. Just no, it's the, the lib. The, the PDB information is in the lib, and then when you compile, it gets put into your PDB. I see. Okay. Um, so only things that are final outputs like XEs and DLLs that are native are our problem children that we have to find a new home from. Um, Zach brings up the interesting idea of convince the .NET Foundation to spin up a symbol server for member projects to use. I think that would be a great idea, except they'll never get around to it. Um, I mean, they'd have, I, yeah. Uh, Someone would have to volunteer to, to do it and maintain it. Do it, maintain it, put it all together, and keep it working. Like, you know, they did the same thing for the signing service, which, of course, has a lot of money behind it because they have to buy certificates and get all those things hooked up. And when that thing goes down, it can be a real pain for quite a while until someone finally goes, oh, we need to go fix that. And it's not so much, oh, well, you need to go fix that. It's like, oh, I need to go cut a slice of time to go make that happen. And because the board rotates all the time and all this kind of stuff, it's just, it's not a functional system right now. So while I appreciate the concept, depending on the .NET Foundation, is not proven to be a uh, fantastic direction for us, for honestly any project to go right now. Um, so then Sean brought up the idea of re-standing up the symbol source code, uh, which had a whole lot of like machinery to it because it was automatically doing all these things behind the scenes, which is really cool, but even they were like, later, I think they said they don't need to do that. Now you can just stand up a flat web uh, blob storage, honestly, and put a small front end in front of it to um, respond appropriately, because the, the, the symbol server client makes requests, expects responses in certain ways that um, not all the blob storages in the world respond appropriately. In fact, none of them naturally respond in exactly the way it want. Um, and there are a couple of things out there that uh, did that with Python server, and then the, the Electron guys have a way of setting up symbol server against S3 and all those kinds of things. Um, and uh, so all of those are options. We could do all those things. Um, I th think in the end, uh, the, the question is, where do we go in the end? I don't know that, Sean, you, I think you said you weren't going to do that right now, so we should just go back to option two, which is just zip all the PDBs and call it good like V3 for now. Is that where you ended up? I mean, yeah, I guess I would like you to zip them all up. Yeah, yeah, so it's a matter of getting them all zipped up into debug.zip and released with every release. But that doesn't really resolve the issue. It does not, it means that in V4, we would not be publishing to a source server. So essentially I'm suggesting that we are going to punt this um, until the next time. It doesn't have to 
be done in v4 time frame we could be, as long as we have the symbol somewhere we could always upload them later if someone wants to spend time um, setting the system up then we can upload them later and add the system for a future v4 I, my the reason i want to go through this is kind of give a background on all of the pieces to this and then have us make a decision if we want to hold put this in v4 or if we can just let it slide again and i think that's why i removed myself because I want to just let it slide unless someone wants to step up the work to do hook up one of these concepts of how to store these symbols and make them available to a source server. I right. mean, I don't mind doing the work, but I need someone to give me a server where I can host that small front end. Yeah, we should be able to do it with just an Azure function. So if you can get it tested against the local Azure function, then we can get that put together with the Wix toolset site. Yeah, I can look into that. All right. So do you want this in V4? I mean, it doesn't have to be V4, like you said, yeah. but you can yeah. give it to me. OK. Well, I'm just trying. I, I want to know if we keep it in the milestone if we put it in 4x. I don't know. How's your burn, how's your burn queue looking? <laughs> it's, uh... it's much smaller than mine. Stuff is being added, stuff is being removed. It's not really changing <laughs> lately. So not so much a queue, it's just a... But that's same with Rob's <laughs> as well, <laughs> so... Mine's sure. going down and mine. slowly. <sighs> I make mine goes, go down and then <laughs> just because I don't reopen issues when I need to go back and fix stuff. Uh, my My vote is this could be done at any time. I would not hold up preview one. I would not hold up for a RTM for it. As long as we have the PDBs, we can always, you know, improve stuff later. Right. Uh, for me, the advantage of the source, uh, sorry, the advantage of the debug zip as in three was that you had the PDBs and the matching source in one spot. You unzip it, you put it in a static spot and hey, look, you can debug your BAs. Bug burn. It was great. The, right. All the magic stuff would be good as well. Uh, but I'm also I'm also sitting there going, yeah, you know, the the experience in Visual Studio with native code is okay, but not great. It's not like it's a huge improvement over uh, over the debug zip idea. Right. Right. Whereas managed code, they did great. That experience is, is yeah pretty delicious, but yeah I don't know why they why they, they don't this still symbol it. source thing because they had kept this source this nuget sim source thing working and that would be fine. Um, well, it was oh, never Microsoft though, right? I, I, it was really confusing. It was never sorry. It was never official. It's like nuget.org. So know. no, yeah, the nuget team helped the symbol source thing get become a member project of the .NET Foundation. And then the people running it went off to go do other things because they were busy, which was totally fine. But then nobody picked up the project. And it was just like, wait, so what did you do? You transitioned .NET Foundation and then dumped it? I'm like, well, yeah, that's probably exactly what they did. And NuGet never picked it up or something. I really, I'm a little curious what the history is there, but um, it doesn't help us at the moment. All right, so actually thinking through this, um, there is still the issue of changing the way that we're zipping the current PDBs. Um, so there's another issue coming up that I think maybe uh, I'm really not that otherwise will be deleted. So, all right, let's keep this one for the symbol source. Let's discuss the next one when it pops up because I opened it um, today. It'll be, if it's not the next issue, the issue after that, I think. Um, about in the end, I need to create an issue here that says, switch all the SNU, packs, SNU packages to, or whatever the heck they're called, um, to uh, just one big debug.zip. All right, so let's not lose that. But otherwise, let's drop this out of preview zero and into 4x, I guess. Sure. All okay. right. All right. Um, I'm, not, I'm not seeing your issue, Rob. Uh, it's, it's this one here. It's two oh. later. All Let's right, see. so. Um, I've not can had. We just it, do I, that one next. Sure, we can do this one next. This is related to burn. 
we don't have a, we were missing a SNU package for burn due to all the build process stuff being missed. So was, and Sean caught it. So I'm like, oh, well then we need to have this. So we don't actually need this now. This has now been obliviated by the fact that we need a debug.zip um, instead of all this. So one option is to either we nuke this issue and we uh, created a and, and we create a new issue for debug.zip, or we rename all of the content in here and make it debug.zip. Um, what I would say is nuke this one, bring back 6461, and then just change 6461 to be put in a zip instead of... Yeah, that, we can do that. Let's do that. So let's kill this one and bring back this, and we will change the title of it to be... Um, found in ensure PDBs are only found in debug.zip. And that will do that. All right, so 6698 will get deleted and we will redo 64, oh, sorry, I lost number, 6467 or uh, what was it? 61. 17, same thing. All right, cool. So that's these two done. Was that too fast, Bob? Nope. Authentic code signature, I, I, I did signing. I did the signing targets. I, I tackled those, but they put me in a good spot that I have a better spot where I can approach this problem. I have not yet done the work on the authentic code signature, so hopefully in two weeks I'll come back and have a better answer on this. So I, I want to leave this as triage and come back to it in two weeks. I will have more by then. So I'm going to skip the uh, 6447 for now and come back to it. Please. All right. Suppress some error logging. Not it. Bob? Uh, if you look at a debug uh, level burn log, bundle log, um, you get a bunch of error and failure messages. Um, these are the probably the most egregious ones uh, because there's a bunch of of registry lookups to see if a reboot is pending. Uh, this is unrelated to the bundle reboot pending thing that I also worked on. Uh, but this one, this just looks really scary. And of course, it's all the, you know, it's all standard, right? You know, we got a failure from, from trying to look up a registry key that doesn't exist. So of course, it failed to open the registry key. And there is, in fact, an error each result. And, Blah, blah, blah. Um, the the you know, big problem here is these are completely benign, um, and it just looks really bad. Uh, Sean pointed out this is only in debug logging, so I kind of went, huh. In debug level logging, you expect to see noise. This is scary noise, so I don't know, or scary sounding noise. Um, so I kind of, uh, I was ready to close this as going, oh yeah, it's debug logging. Um, but now I'm wondering, is it too scary? Is this noise too scary? So let's discuss that. I don't know how you solve it. I think it's annoying. I don't know if it's too scary. It's a lot of noise, yeah. And maybe it's, maybe looking through the rest of it, it's not a big deal. Um, but, you know, we, we've gotten comments before um, when, you know, like in an MSI log, custom actions log, Error failed, or ooh, that that that's disconcerting. Um, where you know it's more like in this state, it's just like yeah, we looked for something, we didn't find it. Um, I mean, in this case, you can move that check into deutil, and then like uh, don't print errors that there's 
failures to open a key. Until the day when you want it. <laughs> right, yeah, I, right. I, don't know. I think that's why I'm, I am I started to waffle is um, this is not bad if you're looking to debug a reboot pending issue, right? Yeah. This shows what we looked at. Sorry. Well, no, the problem is it shows what we looked at and didn't find. It doesn't show what we looked at. If we successfully opened a registry key, we do not get that information from the logging. Here we said, okay, well, it definitely wasn't, you know, this registry key that caused the false pending reboot positive, but. Mm -hmm. Is there a mechanism for a consumer of Dutil to say, please don't log this? No. Only per system. So they could opt out of RegUtil, for, ex for example, but that would be all RegUtil messages everywhere. What's, is this something you can trigger at runtime? In other words, could could the could the function in burn that tries to detect pending reboots turn off regula logging for the duration of its registry checks and then turn it back on? Yeah, I mean it's making a callback for every single message. So every line here, dutil made a call to a callback inside of the stub, and the stub is checking whether debug logging is on, and if so, it logs it. Of course, because it shows up in the burn log. Yeah, I should have figured that out. So, uh, okay, so that I mean that's that's interesting then, right? It's not convenient, um, but we could enhance burn to. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Follow up. <laughs> we have some global in logging that says, "Yeah, don't log these at this time," and that's all based on the the source, right? Yeah, it's saying that it's a red util source. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I guess since I opened the issue, I will vote, and my vote counts for more than one. <laughs> uh, and I will say, uh, this is fine for four. Oh, we might want to look at it. In more detail. Yeah, I've, uh, I've had a dream for the perfect error handling logging system, especially in native code, and still don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah. Well, it, yeah, you know, the, this is part getting, of it. It's like here, this here's the error that happened. It's like no, I understand that's not an error that I care yeah. about, and carry on. It's like thank you for telling me. I will make a decision based off that. It's not an error. Right, and and you know, truthfully. There, yeah, there's so many ways we could we could you know resolve this. Um, you know, Burn could use the registry APIs directly. Um, we could have ex functions or flags in Regutal that they get don't don't log these. <sighs> yeah, so all right, okay. You so have the I'm, issue I'm, to make it disappear. Um, I'll do something. I won't close it. I'll but not I'll end up in Wix four. Yeah, it's not. It's not four. It's definitely it. not four. Great. We have handled that one. Detect when restore is required for a Wix project to build. Yeah. So uh, this was found on my uh, stream. If you guys are following along, it's a lost story. This one, but essentially, I made a very interesting mistake where we had a Wix project that had a package reference to I think the UI extension. And then I built and it failed <laughs> to link to the UI extension. And it failed because, well, the UI extension had not been brought down through the package reference. And I had this, and the fact that I paused for more than one second said that other people were definitely going to have uh, more of a pause at some point. And so the decision was, you know, the C sharp, if you were building a C sharp project, it would have spit out an error. So I went and tracked down the error that it would have spat out and said that we probably should have at least an error as good as this in the Wix tool set to tell you, hey, um, you forgot to run restore. And 
then get you back on him. So uh, this is already signed to me. It's all in here. Um, I just brought it up in triage so that we know it's another bug that I need to fix in my trials and tribulations of MS Build. But it'll be a good one, and it will make life a little bit better in the list tool set. So that is that one. And I think we're done for today. Okay. So I'd just like to point out that all the new issues were by core contributors, but none of them from me. Yeah. That's good, right? I don't know. Yeah. It means that we're doesn't... locking down non burn areas? I don't know. <laughs> the, the, I would like it's to point gonna, out that... writing the highlights more complicated, because last time I could blame Sean for everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the thing I like is that the issues I'm opening are significantly smaller than the issues I'm closing. So that's at least progress as well. So where I have, you know, five-day tasks to fix one issue, and I create two half-day tasks or something like that, or, you know, whatever. That that feels at least a little bit like progress. So, all right, that's triage. I think that's what we have for that. Let's go back. Anything else people want to talk about? Questions, comments, other things going on that need to be discussed or should be discussed? We have a great chat. We have some people active in the chat. It's great to have you. For you new members, you're welcome to ask questions that have been burning in your mind for a very long time, or just hang out and chill. That's fine. Nothing wrong with lurking. Um, for other guys, uh, Jacob, glad to see you're here. Ron, I know you're working through a whole lot of commits that you've been making, so hopefully as we get those different PRs, we can start whittling them down to the set that will fit the best way into Wix 4 and so on and so forth. So I know those things are out there. Anything else? By the way, this is the point where I babble on a little bit to make sure that there's time between uh, the time that you see these uh, slides and everything like that. The broadcast goes out to you around the world and then gives you time to type something. This is also why I recommend typing your chat for questions and comments earlier so that you have them in here and I can kind of jump through the queue and I don't have to always babble and babble and babble and try to figure out the uh, right answers to this. Oh, I remember. So did Mark? You, I had a question for you. Okay. Did you yeah. see my message about the, the, like the reinstall request state for a package on Wix devs? I saw it, but then Bob got it and it went to mend and I kind of stopped. So I did not read it deeply. I will, I admit that. It went Should to I? mend and you just stopped reading? Well, no, it hit reinstall, it hit mend, and you responded. And I went, hmm, I'm going to go fix signing targets. <laughs> I didn't dig into it deeply. Uh, well, basically, oh, oh. Ah. For, for a bundle package, uh, you like, for example, the issue I'm working on where we want to reinstall an upgrade bundle if the install failed. Like you want, even if the package is present, the BA might want to request an install. But today, everywhere, if the package is already present, it's not going to reinstall the package. If you ask for an install, because it's going to be like, yeah, it's already installed, and we'll skip it. This is this is a problem we have from yeah. uh, BAs, like BAs get to make a request, but they don't get to choose a state. They only get to request a state. Yeah. If, sorry. If they get to request a state. Vern still determines the action from that. Correct. And that's and we right. have kind of these weird states where that's insufficient. So you know we added extra stuff so that you know you could work around the the Vern's default choice right and it's just I think this is another one oh. I, I I thought force was was equivalent but it's 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 a little it's, it's I mean it's still in the same you know genre of of um, needing to give BAs a bit more power so is the answer to just keep on adding request dates even though there's not an overall action that corresponds to that request date? Maybe. Uh, I, I, 
I'm not against that completely. The, the challenge, of course, is we want to make sure we keep them under control, like right? that we don't have an explosion of every of that we don't have an explosion of common torques that don't make sense. I guess so. There's that. Um, the request states have to be added purposefully, I guess. So I this is a case where the package is installed and you want to install it again. You you want the MSI to install. Well, mainly it'd be a bundle. Oh, a bundle. A nested bundle. So you have a bundle. It's already installed, but you want to tell it to install again because it's yeah because it's going to do something different by doing an install on it yeah because the bundle doesn't really have modify not on the command line at least yeah so it's, if, always, it's always just going to be install i mean as far as burn is concerned there's like okay. install repair and uninstall yeah so this is the the root issue. There is this is mend. Yeah, this is mend. Yeah, yeah. So is is this mend? I mean, should I bring back mend? No, this isn't mend. This because the truth truth is no, it's a little. We, yeah. We've we've actually gotten this before. We've seen this before with plain MSI packages. Um. Uh, it's not usually. It can be. Um, rerunning an, an MSI, if you know all other things being the same, does nothing, right? There's no reason to do that, um, except you know there is a default reinstall mode, so you run an install and it would do the equivalent of amend, kinda, um, but more importantly, custom actions get run. And so I've seen this, I don't know, Stack Overflow or somewhere um, someone surprised that burn doesn't rerun the package like well yeah but you don't want says, like, yeah most of the time you don't want to rerun the package so i'm i'm hesitant to change the current behavior because no, no no current behavior i no i agree the current behavior yeah, is correct right. this calls for you know, again this is the you know burn is making the decision present yeah. You know, State present, request present, action none. Right. That is correct. And this so is the, the question: Is do we change? Do we make a new request condition, state, whatever you want to call it, um, or you know, or is there some other way? Sorry. How this? is this different from mend? Like mend to me was always just run install again. Don't run repair. Just run install because repair fixes all of your stuff. Install just goes through and says, hey, is you know, just run my stuff again. If it's all in the right place, don't touch it. Or repair is like, make close. sure all these things are in the right place. It's, kind of it's, it's close to mend. Okay. Um, on, on a package, it would, it would let the, it would let the, you know, it would let the package decide, say if someone horribly authored reinstall mode. Um, yeah. But it, but yeah. it, it, you know, it it would let the the default happen. Mend mend passed in specific, yeah, you know, reinstall mode. I I see. Mend has set a particular reinstall mode. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, that's, where, that's that's the where hard part with the Windows installer is the all the different reinstall modes and communicating yeah. those. And and reinstall, I guess. Reinstall is another word for it. Um. The the issue I have with the word reinstall is it has meaning for MSI. Is it, it has meaning for MSI and also it can mean uninstall and install again. Like reinstall yeah. it. Like yeah. uninstall it then reinstall which is not which is definitely not the same as well just install run the install again. Yeah. So that's why I like the word mend for that. It's kinda like, yeah, you're already here, just kind of, you know, do your thing, do any minor things. It's not repair, it's just you know, minor touch-ups. I don't. I'm maybe I'm just getting tripped up on that word, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then there's of course controlling the reinstall mode for the MSI. That's a challenge. 
from? Well, well that's, I already that's implemented where, that's that. Repair. Oh, that's right. You have that. Yeah. Not in V3, but yeah, V4, you can do that now. So, so this just comes then. I guess it'd have to it'd be interesting to go back for me. I, I guess where I would start to say is look at the reinstall mode and what was done for MSI packages. Can any of that be applied to bundles? Not the setting the property and stuff, but the way of triggering it. How is the reinstall mode set again? If you're planning an MSI package, there's a separate on plan event where you can pick which file versioning, which, Reinstall. you know, A, O, yeah. okay. E. But, but, but that only happens if there's an action. Right. And this, this is, that's not this case, right? Uh, this case is the action is none. So, you, so if the, so if we had the foo request state, which is, like mend in my mind, but it's over, you know, that has context or uh, has baggage. So if we said, if we had the foo request state that essentially was install this again, even if it's installed, launch the install, if you pass in the foo request state, then that would allow it to trigger the reinstall mode for an MSI. That, right? That's right. missing today. It could exist. And it could also then do the same thing for um, bundles, where it would be like, hey, I'm going to run you again. And it's a BA request. It's not a normal behavior. Like a BA has to explicitly request it. It's not something you get into normally. Right. The difference is that with the reinstall mode support that Sean added, you get that behavior today with a repair because you can control the reinstall mode to downgrade a you know repair from you know to amend. So if you if you yeah. want to go that okay. route, you could do that. With bundles as well, I imagine. Um, I don't know if maybe yeah. Repair with a call, but but is that callback an MSI package specific callback? Like does it have MSI in the yeah. name? Yeah. Because it, yeah, it, it's it's MSI. It, it, it lets you do the UI level and the external right. UI handler and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Okay, it's all that. Yeah, so. So I guess I, I'm not against a, a foo flag that's in between, in, that's above install but below repair, that exists only to install if already installed. See, and this is where I like force, force install. Yeah, that, that's... To match force uninstall or force yeah, remove. force absent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever that is. Um, that's not yeah. bad either. I, I can do force install if I can change force absent. Because <laughs> they need to be symmetrical if we had those two. Well, so that's why I recommended force present to match. Because right now the states, the state is present and absent. The states are present and absent. So I would... Yeah, but as I pointed out, force absent, the force part requires uh, means that you're ignoring the permanence on the package. That's all it means. Yeah, right. That's, which, which, which makes sense. That's why I was not a hundred percent on the force install, because um, that's I remember because the force has a lot of strength behind it. The, I mean, or in my mind, right, it's the connotation behind it has a lot more strength to it, which is why it worked for the nuking the permanent packages. Um, but I mean, I would. If you say force absent, I kind of would like that to mean you, for an EXE package, that you run the uninstall even if it wasn't detected. Because oh, that would be symmetrical with force present being run the install even if it was detected. Right, 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 right. No, that's interesting. Um, for what it's worth, there is uh, a large software, software company in the Pacific Northwest that added yet another level of force um, that's beyond the current behavior of force absent. So what do they call it? Nuke? I don't remember. <laughs> I just um, remember looking at it going, 
Dewey, and that's what I started calling it. So I'm not against the force absent for XE packages. I'm only concerned that some XE packages might get upset if you tell them to uninstall and they're not installed. Like they could fail. But I yeah. guess we're going to ignore the failure on uninstall anyway. Um, as and long as they don't throw BAs, UI, it's okay. Only BAs can request it anyway. So. Ah, uh, right. So you'd only request it for yeah. things that you knew would respect it. Yeah. That's I, that's totally fine by me there. You know, don't do that. Although. Quick standard BA exposes force, doesn't it? No. No. Oh. Never mind. Cool. <laughs> all right. So yeah, no, I'm I I'm not against the force absent on XE packages at all, especially since it's controlled by the BA. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you could go Can with force can... install. I mean, I was also thinking install again was an option. Yeah. That that well, the problem is install is the action, and again, we don't let the BAs. Determine action. Oh, oh, present again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, pretty please, present. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. Yes, I will. I will accept please as the replacement. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the nice force, right? It's the yeah. one that doesn't like ignore permanence. Like, it's, please. <laughs> it's a it's a request, not an order. Exactly. It's a request, not an order. That's exactly right. <laughs> Proper etiquette, peoples. Um or you could go with one that's a little bit stronger. I don't know, that uh, it's, you, your attendance is required kind of thing. I don't <laughs> But anyway, it's it's a it's it's a name. I think there is probably value in having the one step above install and one step below repair, which is why the concept of mend always resonated with me. Yeah. Even yeah. if it wasn't in there correctly, that that concept still makes sense to me. One step above install, one step below repair. It's right in between those two spots. So is is that what you want this new thing to do for MSI packages to be what mend was? I think I removed should... mend. Yeah, I know. It, yeah, I, I, no. See, I want to, I want to restrict it because, again, we're talking about two different things, right? One is the, the strength of of the reinstall. The other is just the action. So in I, my I mind, you could, if you brought men it. back for MSI packages, which I think would be totally fine, it would set the reinstall mode letter appropriately, right? So maybe you don't have to re override that function, that callback necessarily. Yeah, but the. So the problem, even though I wrote mend, Sean has convinced me it's a terrible idea because there is no one choice for mend. There's no one reinstall mode that means mend. No, I, I understand. I was just like, we could pick the one that we think is most appropriate for mend. They, of course, can still override it through that callback. That's yeah, why that callback yeah. is a good thing, right? That's a very good thing. Controlling the UI level, all that. That's all very good stuff. This is just... It's the state in between install and repair. I still think we're missing that. That's that's my high level point. Um, and naming it is is interesting. Um, force present, present again is weird. Present. <laughs> I like please, but that's also kind of weird. Um, so it, it's something. I don't know. I there. put it right about the same level of weirdness as mend, but. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Mend is well, yeah. At least it's in the space. Yeah. All right. No, I remember. I remember the problem of naming mend when I did it. Um, I in, yeah. I, I guess I'm not opposed. In my mind, I'm. I'm. See, I'm sitting here waffling mostly because it's a little weird that Burn makes a final decision and the BA can't override it. In my mind, this this is pointing out the fact that, you know, we should consider whether BAs should have control over the action. Um, but that's a you know, not a V4 discussion. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to think through the implications of all that. Exactly. It'd be so very I, hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be very hard. Intercal? I don't. What is intercal? 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 Back, please, present. Intercal? I don't know what intercal is. All right. Is that enough data, Sean? Enough opinions to formulate a.
coherent engineering decision? <laughs> I'm not sure we decided anything. Well, I think or... there's a state into it. I, I, are you saying, I don't know that we've named it. Yes, I think naming is <laughs> still a problem. So we definitely want it for EXE packages, but we're not sure whether we want it to do basically mend for MSI. I would I would allow it. I mean, I wouldn't block it, I guess. I just have it, yeah, just go through and set the reinstall mode. Oh, when the first joke was coming. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, I don't okay. like actions I, that only apply to certain packages that I'm to certain package types. The, the request states that apply to certain packages. Yeah, I guess that's my question is, what does this new thing do for MSI packages? It does I, it could, install again. It doesn't install. The question is, does it set reinstall mode? No. Or or it sets reinstall mode to the simplest. Or no. Well, no, it doesn't but, set reinstall mode. No, it doesn't set reinstall mode. It just installs MSI. OK, done. That's fine. So yeah, again, that leaves that. it up to the authoring to decide what happens, including custom actions. Yeah. Which, yeah. again, that's you know the only thing I've heard about people wanting this behavior. Yeah, because when installer does the rest of it correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but you know, but it can you know you can set reinstall. You know, you can choose the features that that get reinstalled. You can set reinstall mode um, all through you know Site 51. So. Um, it's not, you know, it's not an outrageous thing to want to simply rerun the MSI install. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So just to clarify that, when you say it's not sending in reinstall mode, it's actually just having the default of B O M U S, right? Yeah. Whatever. Well, it would literally or whatever's run, authored inside the MSI. It would. It would take the same path that it does today for a not present action install. I just want to make sure I didn't mess something up by, because I'm passing in reinstall mode all the time now, since it's configurable. So on the install, it's passing in reinstall mode V-O-M-U-S by default. I think that's the default. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, and I think good. the I think this no, it's not. Sorry, not for an initial install. No. Uh, is... The V means recache. Oh, mm. it it might not have the V. Okay, that would that'd be fine. It, actually, I don't think Omus is the default. Um, I want to say it's like ECMAS. I used what I the documentation said the default was whatever. I used. <laughs> yeah. So I the, went by the, the documentation on reinstall mode. Okay. The documentation says it's PECMAS. P E C. Which, yeah. yeah. Which is only if the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's. Yeah. P says only if the file is missing. E says the file is missing or equal or older. So where. What documentation are you looking at? <laughs> Reinstall mode property. Because I'm looking at this one, and it says... Sorry, which is this one? At the link I just pasted in the chat. Oh. Too many windows open. So it says by default it's OMIS. Yeah, you don't. You can open it in here. So I'm just... I need to find where you're saying it's something else. Um, the the last paragraph before the the purple note box toward the end. Now the command line option is that. Interesting. But the property reinstall mode is Omus. Where it, at the so above. Yeah. Oh, Omus sounds more right. Older, yeah, it's older. It's not equal. Okay. 
Why is P and E a thing? Yeah, it, it's dumb. It, that, that is dumb. Omus is probably correct. So I think that's the default for the force command line option. P, E, C, M, S. Well, F is how you recache reinstall, and you start the recache reinstall process. So yeah, which makes like a sense. minor upgrade. Exactly, which would be more of a minor upgrade kind of thing. So it make, that makes more sense there. Yeah. I think Omus makes makes sense. I think I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I also think it's interesting to have the callback still go in this mode so that if they wanted to change it from O to something else, they could do that. Yeah, agreed. And then everything Yeah, they can do that. Flowing. Yeah, that's great. And it's fairly consistent as it rolls through there, which is great. Good? Yeah. We, we don't have that callback for bundles, so it's literally going to just call it the same switch as it would for a normal install. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That works. Yep. yep. I mean, you added all those conditions to where they can see the action. Well, I guess the action is still going to be install on it. Yeah. Oh, well. They they want to install it again. That was the what That's they, they wanted to do. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, again, you it's know, not none. The, <laughs> the DA shouldn't be making you know machine changes, but it you know can decide to rerun packages that might. So. All right. Cool. I think Sean has done a fantastic job delaying, and Zach has interjected a concept of intercal, which I'm now going to have to go put in my search browser over here because I've never heard of this joke language before, but it sounds like somewhat amusing. Um, all right. Oh, Pachula, looking forward to Seamless Visual Studio 2023. Yeah, no, Wix 4's integration into CI CD is way, it's, it's light years ahead of where Wix 3 is. So Wix 4 is going to fit into all those things very, very nicely. We're getting... In fact, that's really close to working now as the end-to-end -end is really close to working now. We just have to go through and fix all of the things that are missing or broken or otherwise need to be completed in V4. That's really what it's really starting to feel um, like we're getting there. But, um, yeah, it's just a matter of cutting through the, I think it's 90-ish, 90, 90 95 bugs uh, that are, we have right now, something like that, 90, 95 bugs. That's where we're at right now. That's it. All right. I'm going to call that a meeting. Look at that. One hour, 1030. My mic clock. It's actually a little bit less because we started five minutes late, but it's fantastic. It's been great having all of you here with us right now. Uh, for all of you in the future that are going to watch this, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you learned something. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. We're here on YouTube. So that says that's the 27th. I think that's normal, right? Everybody be here. Yeah. Yeah. So, We'll do the same place, same time, two weeks from now, 9.30, January 27th. And until then, you guys, take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.